You've read the title of this video, and I will admit I don't regret what I did. What did I do exactly? That's the hard part. This right here is me, about to betray everyone who either trusted me or didn't. The point is that it pissed off a lot of people. It's kind of a long story, and depending on which side you stand in the scenario, that's up to you to decide. And for you to understand how I got to this point in my story, I need to bring you back to the very beginning. This story takes place not on any normal server. It all began a few months back, when Fancy Orb, a fellow Rust creator, announced his new and upcoming event called Global Warfare. This event would be made up of thousands of Rust players, with over 300 of them being Rust creators, and the in-game map would resemble the entire world. Now, numerous amounts of these creators would form their own countries, laying claim on the land around the entire map, forming nations and groups at the size of hundreds. But you might be wondering, what did you do for this event? After all, this server was about building a country, right? Well, let me tell you this. Because there was one country that got overlooked by everyone else. So I came up with a plan, and that was to build the great country of America. Welcome to the America Discord, everyone. The event starts in roughly a month from now, but today we introduce our candidates that are running for mayor. My name is G-Baby. My name is Epic Dutch. Robert Lobby. Luxman. Miles. And I am running for governor of New York. Mayor of Florida. Governor of Alaska. For the mayor of California. Mayor of Hawaii. Just like in the real world, we tried splitting America into multiple states. Each state will have a position of power that will help control land. But first, let's see what you guys have to offer. My plan is to Sam side off outpost. I plan to supply the country with weapons. I plan on making hotels in California. Build a massive tea farm in Hawaii. Build a southern wall. I have to ask, who is going to pay for the wall? Huh? Each state in America was elected their very own mayor and governor. There would be six states total, with one directly in the middle, our capital. A massive compound with a bunker, funnel wall, and a fully automated sorting system. This is where I and my core team would live, of course, and to accompany that, I couldn't just run the country by myself. So I called upon my good friend and right-hand man, Spency. He would be second in command as vice president. Everyone had their own role. Civilian, farmer, builder, and so much more. Now, just like America, there were plenty of other creators who would claim land and form their own country. Which brings me to this. So this is the in-game map. Now, over in North America, we wouldn't be alone. There were two other major groups that would form in this region, with the first one being Mexico. Now, I wouldn't have any direct interaction with their leader until later in the event, but our groups wouldn't see eye to eye as our countries would be at war before the event had even begun. This all started from a message I received on Twitter when I announced myself as the president for America. This message alone was enough to assume that we wouldn't be friendly with each other. Now, another important thing in North America was one particular monument that would cause a lot of problems to the rest of the world in this event. The abandoned military base. This place would give anyone the power to launch a missile strike to anywhere else in the world. And since it was located between both countries, there was gonna be some conflict. So for the first couple hours on day one, the entire world was focused on getting a start and claiming their land. However, for us over in America, this would prove to be both a good thing and a bad thing. Things were complicated to say the least, but we had each mayor and governor get their villages settled in each key location around the country. And with our capital being built by a few select builders and our core team, I went around the country to check up on each state's progress. Yeah, so everything is going pretty smoothly right now. I'm just working on getting TCs down and trying to claim the build priv around the island at the moment. Things are perfect. We have a couple of bases down now. We also have some villagers that have been joining our town. I'd say Florida is looking pretty good so far. So our farmer has the tea farm all started. Uh, our main base though, uh, you see it's uh, fully metal. Yeah, Hawaii is doing pretty much okay right now. Only problem I'm having is the group building nearby us. Uh, they go by the pirates. They've been kind of scummy. They keep pretending to be friendly. They come up to us. They kill us. Only problem we have right now is finding loot. Mexico has been stealing everything from us. They're always roaming around military base and and every time we go there, they're just camping the whole time. Our main problem at the moment, though, is Mexico. We're trying to get us to oil rig over there, but we have four men there. We can't counteract, like, the 20 people they take every single time. So this was sort of the start of most of our problems. You see, I and the rest of my country figured the best way we could hold control over America was to have multiple main bases inside each state with villages and citizens living around it. Only problem was that we would unfortunately be spreading our overall numbers across the entire continent, whereas most other groups 
groups and countries were just playing like a normal rust wipe, in large groups and always outnumbering us in any conflict. And since we were so spread out, there was hardly enough time for I and my core team to react. By the time one group was killed and looted, it would already be too late. This one issue alone allowed Mexico and even some of the random small groups forming in North America to outplay us in every situation, making us fall behind. Now, there is one thing that makes a massive difference in a large-scale event like this. Diplomacy. That's right, I might not be the best at Rust, but there was one thing I was good at. Making alliances. Before the event had begun, I made sure to line up a few connections, but one particular alliance would help change the course of this whole event, even for myself. With that being said, allow me to introduce you to the best clan in Rust, OT. These guys meant hell for the server, dominating and controlling any battle they showed up to, raiding people who denounced them, and being a well-fit and organized group. They lived up to the title. If I could have them on our side, anything would be possible. So, I reached out to one of their leaders on Discord to see if we could work something out. So, plan is, at the moment, we have no plan to ally with anybody. We're gonna let relationships kind of develop on the server, but the boys will like it if you give them a worthy target type thing. Are you guys, like, mercenaries or something? Uh, well, they just want action, so give them someone to raid. That might help. Um, you kind of align with them in the, the long term. And uh, who do I who do I go to talk to about this? So it would be Tonza. He's kind of our political leader on the server, so to say. That was Raz. His role in OT is more along the lines of management, but from him, I learned that OT wasn't exactly teaming with any specific country. They just wanted two things, a raid and something that could benefit them. Luckily, I had two of those. The first one of which being the MLRS truck in the abandoned military base. More on that later, but the other was Mexico. They were a problem for us in the beginning and since OT was looking for a hit, who better than them? So with this being said, I booked a meeting with the other leader of OT, Tanza. Is, is this... Is this them? Tanza, are you, are you in here? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Hello. They Hello, have the whole boat. How's it going? God, this is, this is a really cool God, little God. location. I love this. I like how you guys are in the water. Yeah. Um. So, oh. do you guys have a place yeah. we can we can talk more more privately? Uh, yeah. Let's go a bit away from the base. All right, sounds good. Um, so I wanted to sort of talk about sort of like a uh, bit of a deal, right? I want to I want to build a nice alliance with you guys because I think I think I think if we work together, we can do a lot of good things. We're trying to work on you know getting something that we can offer you guys that's that's that you would like. Like I don't know if you guys want HQM, if you want sulfur or whatever it is, but you know we can make it work. Uh, okay, yeah, we can definitely we definitely always uh, always need something uh, at the most moment. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to see with the with the base team that what we are what we are missing most right now and stuff so i'll have to see with the specifics right, later right 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 uh i would like to ask also like what do you guys want in return obviously if you guys provide us with some resources um, from the us let's say we you know had you do a hit on someone you raid them or whatever honestly i'm perfectly fine if you keep the loot all we want is them out of there if it, if you guys are putting in the effort to raid someone we'll let you keep the, the stuff you know we don't want to take that from you um and i and i will say they are i know that they are relatively geared and uh they are pvpers themselves so you know that's why i I've come here today to uh, see if you guys would be interested. Okay, uh, I'll have to talk with the team about uh, like if you if you guys want them like actually fully rated. Yeah, and and if you want, obviously, you know, after you rate it, uh, you guys can keep the base. Um, you know, we don't really mind. What we'll do next is we are definitely gonna go check out the base you guys mentioned. Uh, we're gonna fly over. Right check how it looks okay do you need the name of the guy the main man who's running that base uh you guys are making offer like this so no i don't no i don't but uh you can tell it i mean we are going to do business together he had a lot to say okay. about taking our land from us his name is carnage The deal with OT was made, and shortly after, we worked out a form of payment. They just wanted the loot from Mexico's base and remote access to the MLRS truck over in America. And soon enough, they would be on their way over to seal the deal. However, I wasn't exactly invited to the raid as Tanza asked my team and myself to wait at the shore by their tugboat for when they came back. So, because I wasn't able to record it myself, let me show you how it went from Fancy Orb's point of view. This was going to be a quick in-and-out mission for OT as they arrived on the beaches of Florida to travel down 
down to Mexico. OT arrived to Mexico and would start to build their raid base. OT started raiding through Mexico's base and a few soldiers from Mexico were fighting back on the hill trying to stop the attack and take back what was theirs. But OT had too much control of the situation and quickly shut down any form of resistance. Mexico's base was raided right to their core. Now, you might be asking yourself, why not do this yourself? By all means, we would've. But this was just part of the plan to secure a relationship with OT. Although, at the time, I wasn't aware of how things would escalate from here. We just wanted to slow Mexico's team down so we could get ahead and allow our mayors and citizens to progress. And this did. It actually helped a lot. But this also caught the attention of many other countries around the world. This one act made other groups realize that having an alliance is key for survival this event, but Mexico's involvement in my story wasn't over yet. We were already enemies, sure, and yes, we were kind of already at war, but there was no turning back now. This would mark the start of the official America vs. Mexico War. What in the world? What is that noise? What the fuck? We are North Korea! It is time! Wait, what is that on the tank? Oh, Wait, is that today's sponsor? Wait, no, not that, no! This video is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is the best vehicle combat game I've ever played, and you can play it too for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. They control over 2,500 unique tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from around the world, ranging from historical biplanes and tanks to modern fighter jets. Personally, I feel that War Thunder has some of the best realistic graphics and sound effects for a vehicle combat game. The community has over 70 million players to compete in epic PvP battles. The game features a very in-depth vehicle modeling system, every individual component has been crafted to react to enemy fire, and is susceptible to damage. Also, they're built and x-ray views gives you real-time feedback showing you which parts of the vehicle and or crew were affected by incoming attacks. You can immerse yourself in War Thunder's authentic customization, an extensive system that offers you a plethora of camouflages, historical markings, and decorations for a wide array of vehicles, including those crafted by the community. Play for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation now using the link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in over six months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including the unique Eagle of Valor skin and 100,000 Silver Lions and even 7 Days Premium. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Hello, uh... Oh, it's Coconut B. Hello. How's it going? Nice to meet you, Mr. President. Nice to meet you as well. How, how can I help you? I'd be honored to join your country. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'd just love to be a part of the, the country. Wherever you think it's okay to place me, President, I'd be honored to meet your request. Okay. Well, if you want, you can you can join our uh, West Coast, so you can go and reclaim that area and join, join California. All right. I'll go on over to California. Could I get a bag? Uh, could I get 30 quad to place a bag in, in this country? Yeah, Let me introduce you to Coconut B, a popular creator and streamer who would be joining this event, and not to mention, but he would soon serve a massive role in this story. Although, at the time, I didn't think much of it because this kind of interaction happened quite frequently with plenty of other players and creators. Touring the United States. Our, oh my god, you're, you're uncensored builder? for me. I'm so sorry, Wait, but you're cocking balls out. Hey, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Put it away. Hey, yeah. The president is crazy. Holy shit. As a matter of fact, there is one other group I should introduce you to. Like I said in the beginning of this video, there was two major groups in North America besides us. The first of which was Mexico, and the other was Canada. Well, sort of. They weren't exactly one collective team, but rather a bunch of pesky ragtag terrorist groups. Simply put, they were just an annoyance. They would try to inside us, break into our base, store campus, anything to get under our skin. And on top of all that, they unfortunately managed to take one of our states along the west coast of America, and that would be Alaska. Now, this all ties in together, I promise you, but the reason I bring this up is because of one particular person I just met, Coconut Bee. Coco and I had our first interaction, and he would run off towards the other side of the country like I asked him to. You can join our uh, west coast. Alright, I'll go on over to California. But this, of course, would be shut down by some members of Mexico. This is the military base? Hello? Hey, I'm, uh, I'm a friend. Mexico? What the? What are they do?
Oh my god, I'm in Africa. He would respawn around the world searching for a place he can call home, and after numerous countries had denied him, what the fuck? He would then receive a bag from none other than the group who stole Alaska from us. Uh -oh. Is this Alaska? Uh -oh. Thank you for. Are you the one that bagged me in? Will you accept me to your your, your country with open arms? I'm countryless. Yes, yes, yes. You don't kill anybody. I won't kill you guys. Here, here goes. How come you're helping me out? Because nobody's accepting you. All right, be careful, okay? Um, if you run towards um the abandoned supermarket, there's like a big clan. They're really mean, so just be careful. Hey, thank you, Daredevil. Now, I don't know why Coco received a bag from these guys. Sure, it might just come off as a kind gesture, but Coco and this group would soon share some of the same interests. However, at the time, I wasn't aware of this conversation these two had, but I would soon find out. Now, just like Coco coming to speak with me at my capital, there was someone else who wanted to meet with me that was rather familiar. So, oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Harvest. What's going on over here? Can I get a tour Not of the uh much. We don't want to hide in our own continent, Brawler. So I mean we're, it's it's a little more hectic than this. Rome it seems a lot more crumbling. peaceful. Over here. <laughs> Is crumbling. That is my friend Harvest. Now, for this event, we were split on two separate continents with him all the way over in Rome as their emperor. We weren't exactly friendly with one another for this event. We have a base, probably bigger than this one. Uh, Dude, your base is not bigger than this. Based on your base, it's garbage. But he had just a few things that he wanted to warn me about, so that's why he came to visit. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I was talking to Brawla, not any of you. What did you, What did you really want to talk about, Harvest? Why did you really want to come here? How it's gone? I just what. Can I not talk to my, uh, my best friend, Bralo? Oh my god. I don't know, Bralo. I mean, listen, we, uh, I don't know if you know, there's, uh, there's, there's a French over there. There's OT, the UK, there's, like, Sweden, there's Switzerland, there's so many different people over there, and you have nobody. Yeah, I don't know. Like, when you're isolated like this, you're, you're, you're asking to just be overthrown, or, you know, so we're gonna have the UN meeting soon. What, what is this meeting? When is it happening? I haven't heard anything about it until just now. Uh, UN meeting? It's at 9 p.m. It's gonna be in uh, an hour and 12 minutes, so. Now, there was two things that Harvest brought up there that was pretty important. First of which was my isolation to the rest of the world. Over in Europe, there was plenty of other countries that existed close by to one another, while over here in America, there wasn't many others rather than myself, and those of whom I am already either at war with or just simply not working together. Harvest was right. We were alone on this side of the world. Which brings me to the next thing he mentioned, the UN meeting. The UN was probably one of the next closest groups technically in North America, just located over in Cuba. The UN was an organization that allowed the leaders of countries to talk with one another. So, the UN meeting that was coming up may just hold an opportunity for America to get its name out there and meet with other leaders. Thank you and welcome to the first inaugural global leadership meeting here in the United Nations Assembly Hall. Together, side by side, we can meet to address world conflicts and work together for a better and peaceful world. Thank you everybody for joining us. I know it's been crazy so far. I want to say I admire every single one of you. You guys are doing insane things, but we are too. We as the UN, we want to represent peace, but we also are ready for anything and everything. Unfortunately, about the time of this meeting, I had lost the next six to eight hours of my footage, but the meeting here went as you would expect. Each of those who had something to say came down into the pit and spoke in front of all the world leaders. Some good and some, yeah. But I introduced myself to everyone and gave a brief moment to mention acts of peace, in hopes of spiking the interests of any other country. And with the UN being a peaceful place, everyone can meet here on common ground. There would be more meetings here throughout this event for everyone to talk politics. Politics. But beyond this point, and for the rest of day one, America was focused on building up its strength and helping its citizens. Our mayors worked on their promises and did what they could to establish their state. And the capital was almost done being built. Day one was about building up your country and establishing your name for yourself on this world. But with all this being said, day one of this event had a lot that happened. My alliance and affiliation with OT was just beginning. Tension and rumors about Mexico rebuilding was starting to surface. And there was something fishy about Coco and Canada's involvement. There was a lot of pressure building on all sides, and America was in the center of all of it. But this was only the beginning. How will things develop over the coming days? Well, the only way to find out is to head into day two. Our 
feeling like we may need to stay out of this conflict between the two of you. Not because we don't like you or want to help you, but it severely dangers us. I hope that you can understand our position. I understand. So, what would happen if the U.S. were to topple and fall? What would happen then? What would be your action from the U.N.? Because if I take an action, will there be a reaction from the U.N.? If you take an action, we're gonna stay out of it, Coco. Perfect. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I was a bit worried that you guys were gonna step in to uh, absolve this war that's going on uh, in America, but if you guys were willing to step aside and let me handle and take care of business, then in, uh, I guess in 12 hours time, there will be a new president, that will be me. Good luck, Coco. Day two of this event was kicked off and things looked promising. Like I said before, day one was about building up. However, day two will get a little more interesting now that we finally had a foothold in our country. A lot had happened overnight for the world, but for America's case, new bases were popping up everywhere, our capital was mostly done being built thanks to our builders, and some of our states were finally taking shape. But for me, after three hours of sleep, I would just be logging on for the first time on day two. Oh my god, it's Mr. Brawlo. Good morning, guys. That's Mr. Brawlo. What happened? What's going on? I need some, we, we, need some uh, updates. Mexico has Millie Base. They're, they're, they're over in the, the Great Lake uh, in K-14, I think they said it was. Uh, Brolo, Brolo. Yes. Hawaii. What's up, Hawaii's getting raided right now. Oh my god, another place? Okay. Oh, hold on, let me jump down and let me see. Everyone, Hawaii, everyone, Hawaii, we're getting raided. Oh, jeez. Who by who? Don't know. You know? And I'm just loading online. Gosh, I'm dead. <laughs> Mexico. It's fucking... Yep. Oh. It's Mexico? Bro, it's Mexico, bro. I'm getting the. I'm gonna grind all day and raid them. They have a scrappy. They're on the roof right now. They're on the roof right now. Stay. If they start blowing, if... they already have. Okay, 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 okay. Just try ceiling stuff away. Ceiling, ceiling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to help out if I can. Is yeah. there, is there any kits or anything I can grab? Yeah, right here. It sounds like they're Wait, leaving. You guys go. Yeah, they're gone. They're out of here. What happened to that they one leave? person they... living next to Harbor? Scrappy is gone, so yeah, they must have left. Just as I got to Hawaii to hell, the raid was over. I don't know what Mexico was up to, but it sounded like they just wanted to get a peek into Hawaii's main base and then leave. Whatever it was, I'm not sure, but Hawaii was safe for now. This little false alarm, though, spiked my interest. To be honest, I wasn't sure what Mexico was up to and how they were doing. We would occasionally run into them while we would be roaming around the country last night on day one, but we hadn't checked up on their base since they were raided by OT, so I decided to call in a favor and send someone over towards their territory to scout it out. And when I received a screenshot of their compound from him on Discord, I couldn't believe my eyes. Mexico not only recovered, but tripled in size overnight. They had not one, but four massive main bases walled off on all sides. I had no idea how we would be able to raid them again without the help of others. And this made me think back to what my friend Harvest said to me the day prior. And you have nobody. When you're isolated like this, you're asking to just be overthrown. But luckily during that UN meeting on day one, someone had gotten my message. Someone calling my name. Is someone here to speak with me? Who is this? Wait, who's speaking? Deep in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you open it, uh, Gabe? Can I talk to you? Yes. Yeah, so nobody, is you? nobody out there? Is anybody else out there? Sound no, is no, no, there is a naked with the torch. Well. Alright, come on in. Uh, we just got uh, raided by OT, but uh, we managed to defend, so that's kind of nice, I guess. But they griefed us, so whatever. Oh, uh, I see. This is Keep, the leader of Team France. At the time, I wasn't expecting to be visited by anyone from the other side of the world, but he had some very interesting news to share with me. But um, they bagged Coco in there. Yeah, they were just, uh, you know, talking. And I hear them, they are planning something on you guys, both of their teams. OT and Coco? Yeah, OT and Coco. Coco has been plotting against us since the beginning now at this point. But how did I know this? Like I said earlier, I wouldn't have found out till later. Well, actually, there is something I haven't shown you yet. Remember that little conversation that Coco had with Canada over in Alaska? How come you're helping me out? Because nobody's accepting you. Hey, thank you, Daredevil. Well, there was more. Yeah, this is just a farm base. We're about to go online around USA right now. Wait, we don't know it wait. Yet, so. You're gonna online USA? Yeah. 
Wait, what, what do you mean? everything out of our farm base. This is just our farm base. You're gonna raid USA? Call it what you want, but the timing of this conversation couldn't have lined up more perfectly. Because my vice president just happened to be in the area. You're gonna raid USA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like, we're like 35 feet. But you're USA. No, I'm not. Your name, it There's said- the reason why my name is this. We identify as Canada right now. So we're gonna- Your plan is to take out USA? From the inside? Yup. Air devil. You have yeah, my you have my word. I will join you in that raid, and we will take over USA. I'll be with you. Come on, cowboy. You gotta cover me while I put this base down. You got it. And shortly after this little interaction he shared with Canada, Coco no longer just wanted to live in America. He wanted to control it. So he went around recruiting anyone he could to join his cause. He even had meetings with other world leaders to try and band against me and wiping me off this server. I understand that we have similar enemies with the UN and the US. I was thinking we can merge raid US. Listen to Carnage, I understand you guys have a uh, personal affairs with uh, with US and the president right now. I think the capital is at J17. I'm thinking it'd be a real shame if we uh we merge raid the capital together it'd be a real shame let's have this merge take place Cheers, leave your team and let me invite you to the team i'd like to say welcome to acadia Coco not only convinced people to rally to his side, but started a civil war within our own country. America was now divided with his town, known as Acadia to the north, and the remnants of what I started towards the south and the east. I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to defend against an attack from both Coco and his alliances, who I presumed to be most likely Mexico and maybe Canada, but as for my alliances, well, after talking briefly with Keep, the leader of France, we came to an agreement that would benefit the both of us. In case you're getting raided, in case you're getting attacked, in case you need help, Feel free to ask us as well. We, we need someone like you on our side. I'm not going to lie. Um, so thank you for coming sure, to visit sure. me. It's been, it's been hard over here. We got we got people to our south and people to our north. So, you know, we're dealing with it. And other than France, I was still in talks with OT. And as a matter of fact, they were just on their way to pay me a visit. Hello there. Hey, how's it going? Nice to be talking to you guys again. So, obviously, uh... Yesterday, after we did a Mexico hit for you guys, yeah, yeah. After that, we wanted to go straight for Antarctica. Uh, later, uh, last night, yeah, your yeah. enemies actually uh, came to talk to us. Yeah, who was that? Can I ask? Uh, well, that was Coconut B. I was thinking we can merge raid US. Right, right, Coconut B. Yeah. It seems like you have a few enemies here. You guys were never our number one uh, target anyway. We have not really fucked with you or did anything. So uh, I'm, I'm open to negotiating again. It had been quite some time since Tanza and I had last spoken to one another, but nonetheless, our alliance was still ongoing. Yeah, Coco did share a moment with OT in hopes to have them join his side, but Tanza assured me I had nothing to worry about. So I had to take Tanza by his word and just trust him for now. At the moment, we were alliance with OT and. France. I did talk briefly with a few other countries, such as the UN, but they'd rather just stay neutral instead of joining one side. Yeah, that's a little problematic for us, because we made like a friendly neighbor agreement with him. However, later on in day two, we took this opportunity to put together various groups to focus on all sorts of farming, ranging between basic resources, components, and more. But as for my group, we were just coming back from power plants using the underground train tunnels. Dude, honestly, we need to be running this shit more. Holy shit. Like, impossible. Like, we don't even have a roof turn and we're 60 deep. I mean, we, we don't have much for it being 60 deep, but... We may have more turrets. I know I got, like, a couple today. All right, everyone, everyone stay about, like, five seconds behind each other. No, no, no. Hawaii now. Get to Hawaii now. There's a 12-man zone on Hawaii right now. All right, Ari, we're coming back. Did you did you bag us at all? I was about to. Well, do it right now. I can't. Bag us all, bag I us can't. all. I can't. I can't. Bear the timing of this couldn't have been any worse. Hawaii was now getting raided by which we soon found out to be Mexico. And one massive flaw about all of this, we didn't even have the ability to respawn my core team in Hawaii's main base to help defend. Our only option was to rally everyone together who was out getting resources for the capital and head over to Hawaii by helicopter or boat. However, it soon seemed to us that this raid was a bit more coordinated than we had thought. I, I have to wait 10 seconds. Are they getting raided? Yeah, they're getting, they're getting, yeah, they're getting, raided. Like, raided. They're getting slammed. Yeah, oh, look at that six man, it's coconut yeah. right there. I know, split up, split up, so they don't know like we're all about to come out. Gotcha, all right, gotcha. we need to get over there. Whatever we have, re whatever resources, if we need to buy a scrappy or mini, whatever we need. Oh, there's to so many people. Running. So many people. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm dead! I'm dead! I'm dead! Oh, run, 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 run
tried hard. I'm running the base, I'm running the base. That's the Canada group, that's like- We just lost so much. Maybe it was a coincidence or just bad timing, but Coco's team was ready for us as we were leaving the train tunnels. Somehow, they just knew we would be heading back at this very moment. I did, however, manage to get away from the ambush, but by the time my team and I was ready to head to Hawaii, it was already too late. Hawaii was now gone with another state lost, and now in the control of Mexico. Even with Coco's forces slowing us down, there was nothing we could have done. We were supposed to have respawns prepared for us in Hawaii to help defend, but it just never happened. Soon after this, some members of Hawaii, and the mayor included, gave up and left the server. Respectfully, they were sick of being so isolated from our capital and constantly getting attacked. Although, with America now in a civil war, it wasn't safe outside the protection of our capital. All of our villages and each state was being overwhelmed by the likes of Mexico and Coco's forces. We did what we could to try and fight them off, but they'd always outnumber us, circling back to the same issue that we had on day one. We honestly had a lot planned for America, but a lot of it just wasn't possible in our current state. And not to mention, but as a country, we were broke. All of the monuments and loot near us were constantly contested by all of our enemies, and all of our states were competing against each other for the same single box of supplies. All of our hopes and plans for America for this event was honestly falling before us. And I? I was failing my people as their leader. Maybe this was all my own doing, but we weren't ready to give up just yet. I needed to find a way to help my citizens and help my country. I wasn't just gonna give up this easily. These, this, I just set this out as like a, a sm little little plan thing. So like, let's say Robert and JC come in and they're living in our main base. We're gonna give everybody TC access, which is just we're gonna have to do. It's, it, there's a higher chance we get insided because we give everybody TC, but like that's honestly our group's going to shit and we have to do that anyways. So it's, we either trust them and get insided and lose our base or we do nothing and get raided and lose our base. So it's like, you know, it, we're at an ultimatum right now. Yeah, my vice president was right. We were at an ultimatum and we were contemplating on going against our original concept for what made up our states. The unfortunate thing about this was as much as we wanted to see the idea through, we had to make a change if we wanted to survive this event. And what Spency just mentioned there was that we needed to trust the rest of our team. You see, up until now, the capital base was only accessible to myself and my core team, which was made up of some of my top most trusted members or even some friends of mine, whom of which I call the Secret Service. However, the mayors and governors for each state did have some limited access to the base, but they and everyone else would need to fend for themselves in their own states, which was unfortunately the root to all our problems. We need to, we need to decide on something here. What are we doing? Are we not giving them access to our to our TC? Are we going to give them access to our TCs? Access. They we need should. access to TC. That's the bottom line. Also, every other team on the entire server started in one base together. Yes, We're the first they did. group to start out of four other bases. They were but like what Mexico did is they started in one base and then because they had all these extra resources they're like okay well I'd like six flank bases so we just played this wrong uh, yeah, I, mean, I just want soon after this discussion amongst the team we came to a conclusion that would benefit everyone involved firstly our mayors and governors would now be granted full access to the capital along with all their top trusted members or friends and all the loot from everyone's base would be transferred into the capital where we would all have access to it secondly the mayor's old bases would either serve as a spare base for myself and everyone else involved or just give away to the citizens for free. This change would not only be for the better, but soon prove to alter the course of this event for America. America was no longer defined by its states, but as a strong and collective nation. Later on in day two, the UN held their second meeting with all the world leaders to discuss everything that has been going on around the world. And this meeting would be significant as this would be the first time I'd meet the man who had been my enemy since the start of this event. We're gonna go around and see if there's any oh. really pressing issues that anybody currently has if anybody wants uh, to take the stage for a moment. Carnage Umbrella, why don't you guys go up because you know, the whole server knows this ongoing rivalry. Stand your ground, brother. Where's Brawl? Is it true? I saw a video, I saw a video. 
that you told OT to raid us. Is that true? His name is Carnage. He had a lot to say okay. about taking our land from us. I cannot confirm or deny that. But <laughs> Carnage, is it true that you raided a bunch of innocent farmers and role players along the entirety of the west coast of America? Yes, I raided a bunch of shit talkers and I will continue to raid them as long as I'm in this server, sir. Nothing. We'll see about that then. We'll see about that, Carnage. Right, here, wait, wait. So, is there going to be peace between USA and Mexico? No. Oh, oh, hell no. Is there anything no. we can oh, do? Hell. It's no. It's no. time. It is oh, really hell. Hell. Zero peace. How we took over Hawaii and how we took over, to over uh, the Border Patrol Obi. guys? Obi. We're taking over the US. All right, right take a yeah, seat. Yeah, take a seat. How's, how's that's Hawaii? That's good. That's thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone? Now is the time to speak up. Would anyone else like to go to the center and address an issue against another community? Oh no! Hello, Hello UN. Ahead. God, this guy. Before I begin my message, I'd like to tell you a bit of a story. I immigrated over to Alaska. Is this Alaska? Or how come you're helping me out? With a future in sight and a need to become great. I then met President Brawlo. You want me to be the leader of Alaska? If you kindly accept. I'd love to accept. You have my word. We will take over USA. Promise me a great future in the American dream. Work hard, he said. Get paid taxes, he said. We'll protect you, he said. Just give me all the codes and I'll get my own team in line. And we can trust you, Coco? These guys don't trust us, though, I'll tell you that. Listen, we're changing all the codes in this and we're becoming an independent state. He doesn't care about us. The fact that Mexico comes into our country and thinks it's okay to mess with our people makes me believe that this man is not fit to lead. Listen, Carnage, I understand you yeah, guys have a personal affairs U.S. in the present right now. I think the capital is at J-17. I want to make America great again. Nobody respects President Brollo and his passive-aggressive ways of dealing and leading. I would like to step up to the stands and become the president and the leader of the free world. Let this be a warning. Sometimes conflict must take place in order for peace to prosper. Fuck President Brollo. Fuck the vice president. We need to make America great again. Oh, America. Great again. Oh, America. Oh, America. Yeah. What's up, Tanza? Oh, 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 oh. After the UN meeting, I just randomly spawned at the Mexico's compound because I have few bugs there left from when we raided them. Right, right, right. So I was just sitting in a bush in their compound. I saw them all coming outside, like actually like 25 of them, bro. And why did they come outside? Because Coconut B was standing in the middle of their compound. And I heard the whole negotiation they just went through. Uh, we're planning on raiding today, but uh, you, you still you still don't like the US, right? You still... Of course, of course. Uh, uh, we're planning on raiding. Um someone near you he wants to take over the whole u.s and you are the first step oh he's going to merge with mexico and he also tried to get us to be a, even a third team that is why i told you because i think that's uh that's not that fair and obviously we are not going to take a part of that we don't want anything to do with mexico so yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, could definitely course. join you yeah, and help yeah, yeah. you i mean we're based in america like in that region yeah, yeah, yeah for sure we're for not sure. going to get involved in the raid we're going to let you guys do what you do we'll just shoot from afar and shoot the roof and okay. you guys get third party it won't be us. Yeah, watch your bags. What time you guys think you're gonna do this thing? Uh, maybe like what? Less than an hour. Uh, less than an hour. All right, we'll see you guys then. Yeah, yeah. See you in an hour. Good luck. Vamos. Shortly after the UN meeting, I met with Tanza outside his base where he had informed me about Coco and Mexico coming to raid us. Tanza and I did speculate on how we could even possibly raid them back, but coming from a guy like Tanza who is a pro and knows this game better than anyone I could think of, not even he was confident in raiding them. Now the problem is, uh, first of all, Mexico is really hard to raid because they have four massive bases there. And I don't know how, how good their alliance is with Coco, so it's gonna be even harder if Coco comes to counter. Although, after speaking with Tanza, we added each other on Discord and I went back to my capital to share the news with the rest of my team.
Um, we need to have an important meeting. Yeah, just just governors uh, and mayors. All right, let me. There's so much shooting. I just gotta go somewhere quiet where I can think. Yeah. So what did the Tonza say? They're gonna raid us soon or what? Pretty much. Uh, the, he found he spawned in their compound and listened to what they were talking. At the time, we weren't aware of any of the details that Coco and Mexico shared with one another. All we knew was that they were coming. My team and I did whatever we could to get ready for an attack, but eventually the word about when the raid would start had soon gotten out. One hour is all we had. Everything we had done so far since the start of this event was now on the line. And if we lose this raid, we lose America. We had one hour to prepare and it was chaos. We're getting raided in one hour. Okay, someone please start putting lockers in the shooting floor. Please, someone. Can someone please say they're gonna do it? Someone in this call. We're gonna get fucked, dude. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, close the, bunkers, close the bunkers, close the bunkers, close the bunkers. Hey, guys, I'm hey. crafting 20 face masks right now. The AKs yes, right now, someone please. Okay, 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 I'll grab, I'll grab some. Listen guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, this is looking kind of bleak, but let's have some fun with this and let's win this raid, okay? Everyone was scrambling to get things ready for the raid. Lockers, extra kits, ammo, meds, rockets, turrets, you name it. And amidst the chaos back at the capital, both Mexico and Coco was gathering their people for the raid. And then, while all this was going on, a very interesting conversation was shared between both Coco and my vice president. Don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Vice president, really vice president, come with there. me and talk with me. Come here. I think we do need to have a talk, Coco. We absolutely do. Listen, Spencer, you guys will so, fall man. soon here. Mexico is coming. It's not looking too know, good for you. You got a scrambling. We're prepping. We have everything set in stone right now to defend a raid from you guys. But I think you're right. I don't. I don't know what we're gonna do. I can I, honestly. I can see us. I can see us losing this. You will lose this. I think you're a great man. Spencer, I think you're very loyal, you're capable, and there's a reason why you're the vice president. But ultimately, I think your president has failed you. And unfortunately, that comes down on you. But there is a way out. You could bring your people over here at Acadia, and you could join us against the fight. Oh, no. You said it yourself, I'm a loyal man. Coco, what am I supposed to do? All your president had to do was give me three AKs and this would have never happened. Me giving you the base yes, that's was the, me that's humbling the myself to give you respect, president. I apologize, but Coconut, I wasn't there. I want four full metal AK kits. I know, we didn't have them, Coco. We were poor. It was a ruse. Our kingdom's a ruse. It's shambles. There's nothing in our base. You're going to raid us and get nothing, Coco. We have nothing. It's, it's not about the loot, Spencer. It's about sending a message. You guys are surrounded. We have the East Coast, Mexico has the West Coast, and we have Central. Mexico is coming with 40 men in about 25 minutes to hit you guys, and there's nothing you can do about it. I know. You guys are out of options, Spencer. You're outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned. I know, I know, I know, I know. I think you transfer over to us, and you join the New World Order. You join Acadia, and you join the fight against the President. The devil coconut bee. You're an evil man and you're not gonna win. <laughs> USA will fall. They will go down. Back over the capital, Mexico and their forces would begin advancing towards our area where they would soon set up a raid base. My team and I spent the last hour of this event preparing to be raided, and we were ready. This wouldn't be a fair fight as both Mexico and Coco would outnumber us two to one, but I had a few tricks up my sleeve prepared for this raid, just in case I needed even the odds. And soon enough, the raid would begin. In case you're getting raided, in case you need help, feel free to ask us as well.
With both Mexico and Coco outnumbering us 2-1, to one, in a raid like this, we needed as much help as we can get. So, I called in France to assist in countering the raid on our capital. Guys, remember that French is here to help. They are on the uh, melee base side, I'm pretty sure. Mexico would focus on the raid and sending the rockets, while Coco and his team would be behind Mexico, guarding them from any attack. And with France now in America to help, Coco and his team didn't hesitate to cut them off. All France needed to do was buy us some time, because once the sun goes down, it would make it much more possible to win this raid. I'll tell Mexico we're falling back. We need to fight that 20 man going to Mexico. Go, go, go! Mexico! Mexico! There's 20 guys coming for you! Hey, what direction? What direction? They're coming to the raid. We're gonna hold for you from I-14. We'll handle them. Guys, on my marker, red marker, all on the rock. Let's take them out! Take them the fuck out! Charge in! Let's go! They fought back! We took them out. Let's go back to the raid, boys. Mission accomplished. Coco's team managed to wipe out France, forcing them to retreat out of America. Meanwhile, at the Mission raid, since France lured Coco away from the area, our team was able to push out and flank Mexico from behind, allowing us to reclaim kits in the middle of the battlefield. And while Mexico continued to send rockets at our base, our builders focused on sealing and repairing the walls that were blown open. I got you. I've been rocketing. Dude, we, we all need to push out on the ground. They're fumbling so bad. Get on seal, get on seal. I'm trying to. My frame is so low. Oh my god, dude, my game is lagging so bad. They're starting to pummel uh, shell when you start when you start stealing. France gone and Mexico losing momentum. I still had one more ally I could call in to help finish off this raid. And soon enough, they would be arriving in America to come assist. With OT here, they were able to flank behind Mexico and Coco's team, pinching both teams between our groups, allowing us to start taking control of the raid. Oh my god. There's a 50 man coming from the south. It might be OT. It might be OT. They're here to counter us. MLRS coming in. MLRS coming in. They're rocketing the MLRS, MLRS. These motherfuckers. These motherfuckers. These traitors! These traitors! It was a quick and easy job for OT as they began holding Mexico from their own raid base while my team began pushing out into the field as the sun went down. OT is here to help. We need some people to start going out there and grab some stuff and bring it back. Secure any loot you can. I think I killed him. Yeah, you got him. You got him. Thank you. I got his kit. I got his kit. Job, boys. Keep slamming. Keep slamming. Oh, right in front of me. Get this naked. Nice, nice, nice. Good shit. I got you, Chibs. I got you. I got you. I got you. Chibs, get that shit home, bro. Get that shit home. I'm picking you up. Run, 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 run. With France and OT's help, we were able to secure the raid at nightfall, securing the U.S. a massive victory, and the raid was over. For the rest of day two, my team and I were at a high as this was our first real win as a team. Over the last 48 hours in this event, we were being pushed over and made a mockery of by the entire world. But this didn't stop us. America was now stronger than ever, and with the help of our alliances, we were able to hold on to our country for another day. The tension we had between Coco and Mexico would simmer down overnight after their attempt on the capital, but the war wasn't over. We still had some time left in this event. How will America continue to develop any further, and will we get our revenge? on Mexico and Coco. Well, with all that being said, let's head in to day three. If you're listening to this message, I need your help. Somewhere random on the map, I'll be locked in a building with guards. It's your goal to free me from this building and escort me back to your main base. I'm gonna have a live tracker on me so anyone on the server can see my location moving on the map. The person or group that successfully escorts me back to their main base will receive a nuclear bomb. And this is what it's capable of. The nuke will drop wherever the grenade lands. It'll be announced in the chat where the nuke is dropping so the entire server will know where the nuke is and can counter. After the nuke is dropped, a large radiation zone will be in the blast zone for 60 seconds. The person who wins this event will be the most powerful person on the server and has the capability of wiping out anyone on the server instantly. This is the only nuke that will be on the server, so good luck.
Day 3 started like every other, but our team was still celebrating for the win last night. And also, I should mention, towards the end of Day 2, my team and I raided a couple bases and some of which who actually betrayed us and joined Coco's team for the raid in our capital. This would benefit us a lot as we would finally have some loot to go around in our capital. I mean seriously, this was all the guns and ammo we had during the America raid defense. I would show you the whole raid, but unfortunately I accidentally messed up the footage which explains the black bar on the left side of the screen. But with Day 3 now in motion, it was finally quiet in America. The civil unrest from yesterday led by Coco and parts of Canada was halted. The fighting had stopped and everyone was now focused on the nuke event. With the news about the nuke event, my team and I did discuss how we would use it if we were to obtain it, but getting it alone wouldn't be easy. This is something the entire server would want to get their hands on. But no matter what, and above all else, we can't let Coco and Mexico get it. And with all that being said, on the early parts of day 3, I would actually be paying Tanza a visit to repay him for how him and his team had saved our asses yesterday. Hello, Tanza. How's it going, OT? Though, I brought some stuff for you. I know you had requested these. So this is uh, pretty much literally all of our sewing kits. I'm gonna keep this coming for you guys. You know, I wanna repay what you guys did for us the other day, but um, we're gonna we're gonna keep supplying you as much as we can. Yeah, I think uh, you guys are, are like a only ally right now. Really? Yeah, about that, OT was building quite the name for themselves. Over in the Middle East, where OT lives, they were neighboring Rome, who was led by my friend Harvest, and a few other countries, but OT was starting to be seen as a threat to everyone in this region, which might explain what Tonza was talking about. However, we were more than happy to work with OT. I mean, our country is still standing because of what OT and France did for us. But Tonza and I continued to talk further about this nuke event that was coming up later today. At least what we two can agree on, if one of us gets the nuke, like, obviously we are fine, and uh, then we can talk about Positively new in Mexico even. I'd be interested in that. Yeah, I, I actually, um, I don't know if I sent it to you, but I saw a bit of a picture that was scouted of their entire base layouts. They have quite the big uh, area, I'm not going to lie. So I think a nuke would be necessary on them. Uh, okay, that sounds good. I think it. Uh, we'll have to see uh, where it spawns as well. I think that's a like, yeah. big factor. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it was set. If possible, OT and I will try to retrieve the nuke and potentially use it on Mexico's team and finally end this war between us. But we had some time before this would all start. I would be communicating with Tanza over Discord as we get closer, but I would leave most of the planning up to him. But after I left OT's base and headed back towards my capital, I would be met with a little surprise waiting for me. Hello, President. This is uh the big man this Coconut is, uh, B speaking. We need to have a talk. We need to have a talk. Hey, President. Hey, hey President. Uh, uh, he, he's not at base right now. He's coming back. I'm What's up, Robert? To come back. What's up, Robert? We we'll put all these Nick signs up. Oh, we love Nick A30. Never oh. back down, never give up. Oh. Robert, where's uh, President Brolo yeah, at? Keep, keep coming. Wait here, wait here. The President's coming here? Hello, <laughs> Mr. Coconut Bee. How can I help you? Mr. President, listen, listen, walk with me. Brolo, do you love America? I love America. That's why I want, that's why I'm President, Coconut Bee. That's all I want is America yeah, to be a great Brolo, place. Who made you President? Who made you President? The people voted me. They voted me into office, man. Well, to be honest, that wasn't 100% true. Sure, like everyone else in this event, it kind of came down to calling dibs for which country you wanted to play as, and for me, I was just a self-proclaimed leader who elected myself as the president of America. So I hate to say it, but Coco was right about this, and I wanted to hear him out. We've had a lot of turmoil, we've had a lot of bloodshed. I think it's time to call yeah. for a ceasefire, and I think we should have a re-election, and whoever wins should become president. Let's let America decide who they want to lead. We'll have a poll and we'll have everybody have their notes. We'll have a mailbox and we'll have a person that is third party running the election. Okay. I think I can agree to that. Now, I understand you might be saying why risk holding an election and giving Coco the chance to run for president. Well, that's actually what this event was really all about, and I wanted to be fair and not greedy with power. And also, if this was truly meant to be America, then we should let the people decide who they wanted as a leader of this country. After two long days of fighting and war within our own country, this seemed like the best option to put all this behind us. No matter who won the election, we would both keep our side of the country and only continue by working together. So, after Coco and I came to an agreement, I went back to let my team know about the upcoming election. I had a meeting with Coco, and he invited me to do a re-election and uh, combine, our, combine our forces and become allies. I think I think it would be wise that I go through with the re-election. I'm a little worried that they're more deep than us and that they might rig it, but you know, right? Like you do understand that if like shit goes really south, we're all ready to secede. Thing. I mean, <laughs> we got a loyal ass army behind, all right? We're like, I think we can all say everyone in this chat's not gonna fucking just like leave him behind. Yeah. Bro, I'm not I gonna. Not, ben, dude, that's I my president. No, I am. By the way, we're gonna. 
wants to see! This right here is also why I was okay with going through with the election. No matter what happened, I still had my team and my friends by my side. Later on, Coco came to visit me at the Capitol where we would discuss on how and where to hold this election, either in America or in the town of Acadia where Coco's team resides, giving either side a home field advantage. But we needed a third party to help us come to a decision and host this election so there was no chance of it being rigged. And who better to do that than Fancy Orb himself? Now, I did talk to Brawlo earlier, and he mentioned that this voting might need a third unbiased party to count the votes, and I'm willing to step in here and read the votes if that's what needs to happen. If that's the best person I, for the job. That could I be agree. the fairest way possible. As for where we would hold this election, well, we decided to use an old-fashioned coin flip to help us come to a decision. Blue and red, it's the Republican. Go behind them. Yeah, yeah, blue and red. Okay, all right, all right, all right. What side are you? Are you blue or are you red? I'll be blue. I'll be blue. That's okay. great, you liberal! All right, here we go, guys. Coco is blue. And Brawlo is red. Whichever this wheel lands on will decide where we vote. This is for home field advantage. Here we go. USA, 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 USA. Brawlo, boo, boo. Okay. Oh, All right, that is for Coconut B. Coconut B is the winner. And it was set. Coco unfortunately won the coin flip, so we would be holding the election for presidency in Acadia. And once morning came, the election day would start. Today is election day, the very first presidential election. With all the citizens from America here in the town of Acadia, we would allow everyone to vote for who they want as president. And after two long days of fighting and war within this country, we were finally able to meet here on peaceful terms to end this war between the town of Acadia and the United States. And so with everyone here, we now began to split both sides to count the votes. If you would like to vote for Coconut B, go to this side. If you would like to vote for Bravo, go to this side. Left the right. The votes were pretty split, and there was actually an even amount of people on both sides. It almost looked like we could win this election, but in order to accurately count the votes, we lined up each side and counted them one by one as they left the building. The cowboy, you're good. Silverback, good. Uh, Coop, you're good. Darius, you're good. Payne, you're good. Darth, you're good. Uh, M Donald, you're on the wrong side! Trump, Trump went to Coco's side. That f***ing traitor. Alright, everyone good. line up for Brawlo's votes. Bro, Robert f***ing disconnected, bro. And your face, you're good. JC, you're good. You're Super good. Bomb, you're good. Walkstar, you're Death good. Devil, you're good. Next up, next up. The voting was now done. Coco and I had no idea who would be the winner of this election, but only Fancy Orb himself knew. And once he was ready, he would call everyone back in the building for the final reveal. Thank you all for joining the election today. You all have casted your vote for a good cause. This is a very close vote. The winner won by two votes. The winner and your new president. Oh, good night, me. must go down. These people form their 40-man groups with their 10,000-hour players, and they think they can come in here and bully us like they do with all the other servers? I say no! After the election, another UN meeting was scheduled with all the world leaders since the nuke event would be happening later today. However, there was no sign of OT during this meeting, as the rest of the world didn't include them since they feared that OT would be the ones to get the nuke. I'd ask every country of the world to join me! and getting that nuke button and eliminating OT off the server. We must restore balance in this world, and we must take down OT. 
If you stand with me, you stand against violence and against bullies. Board leaders, come to the center if you say it down with OT. I invite you to join us. We must restore balance in the world and take this group out. Down with OT. Down with OT. Down with OT. That, uh, they're saying like, who does Coco think he is? You know, like we're not gonna fucking listen to him. Still okay. very loyal to Brawlo. We have to decide what group. we're gonna do though right now, Brawlo. Yeah. All of our guys are pretty much do not want to attack OT. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to attack. I just, uh, I, I want to, I want to come through for OT like they did for me. The only thing is like, when we do this, that means we're going against the entire world. Honestly, like I don't want to support the, the 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 attack on OT. I don't. Like they came through for us. I can't. I can't just you know betray them like that. So, but we got to think about this. If we support OT and help them, we are an enemy of the entire world. Everybody, every world leader, even our even Coconut B will come after us for it. Listen, I'm being honest. Like we we go down with a bang. Like. We're a group that has nothing left to lose. Like, I'm telling you right now, all those guys down there are completely in support with you. Like, they want to go to war. Since the start of this event, OT has been our number one ally. They've done our dirty work and they've helped us end the raid on our capital. The entire world was against me and sided with Coco since the start. But OT was always there for us. Sure, OT has been marked as the enemies and the bullies of the server, but besides France, they've been our ally when no one else would. My team and I didn't stand for this war on OT. We wanted the nuke so we can use it on Mexico, but now all we wanted to do was help them like they helped us. This would be our final goal of the event because we knew there was no going back from this. OT has um, to get it. We either we have to or they, No, they have to get it. They have to get it. I agree. We have to keep it secret. We yeah, have to keep yeah, it keep completely it secret more. because we need it to be a surprise for when we attack during the raid if it, if it happens. So it was final. My team and I made the decision to help OT no matter the cost, but we had to be very quiet and secretive about this so the rest of the world wouldn't expect us. And with all that being said, I invited Tanza to speak with me somewhere remote and hidden, where we could safely have a conversation without someone eavesdropping. Here, we laid out our entire plan to Tanza and told him we'd do everything we can to aid them in getting the nuke secured in their base. I'll tell you this, that even though I lost the election between me and Coconut B, we still want to repay you for how you guys assisted us during the Mexico raid. I, I appreciate the alliance and how it's still going. What I'm gonna do, Brolo, whoever wants to come help with the nuke, I'm gonna send you a kit that we are gonna wear. I'm only gonna show it to you and the people who are trusted. You guys just make sure you don't shoot those kits. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea. The other half of the US cannot know. Coco trusts us and uh, we need that trust for right now. So we're gonna try to do what we can to um, make sure we win this war, okay? And since the nuke event was right around the corner, I may as well give you a recap as to how the event would work on the server. Fancy himself would be held hostage somewhere random on the map. And it is up to someone on the server to free him and escort him back to their base by land in order to receive the most powerful weapon on the server. Simple enough, but there was one problem. Every country and player on the server was after this nuke. And after speaking with Tanza, he sent me a screenshot of the kit we'd be wearing during the event to prevent team killing. And speaking of which, he also told me that there would be another team assisting them in getting the nuke. Uh, Brazil is actually gonna come for the nuke as well. I think they will have a quite a big team. Uh, we made an agreement that they won't shoot our kids. Okay, can. okay. And since both of our alliances were meant to be a secret, he wanted us to stay in the air by heli as a last minute option in case we were needed to help with the escort. And when the nuke event began, one by one, every country in the world was ready to head to Fancy's location. The nuke would spawn in the top right of Russia inside of a tower, heavily guarded by scientists and members of Fancy's team. And as I and my team waited back at our base, OT was pretty swift at getting to the tower and securing Fancy for the escort. So my team and I patiently waited from a distance in case we were needed. No matter what, we needed our identity to remain hidden up until the last moment. No one could know that we were on OT's side. And unfortunately, as we were heading to help out, we started to lose some of our men from one of Rust's many issues caused by lag. Our guys were falling out of the scrap helis one by one and getting kicked from the game. It's unfortunate, but it's something we just had to deal with. But in the meantime, OT and Brazil were handling the situation perfectly. By the time we got near their area, Area, OT was pretty close to our base, and since I wasn't able to experience it for myself, here's how it went from Fancy Orbs POV. Big ambush! Oh my God! We're being ambushed! I'm with you, Snuffy. I'm with you, Snuffy's down. Where do I go? Where do I go? I need someone to tag me. I need to be tagged. 
Alright, Liam, I'm following you, Liam. I'm on, I'm on you, Liam. Liam, you got me. You got me, Liam. Where are we going, Liam? Liam, Sid, who am I following? Alright, June, June. June got me. June got me. June, stop. Stop, Chris. Follow me. Let's go. I'm going, I'm going. OT had done it, and with the help of Brazil, they now had the nuke. It was unfortunate that my team wasn't able to assist, but it was for the better that we weren't there. But the rest of the world wasn't happy about this, of course, and directly after the nuke was secured, all the world leaders met one final time to discuss how they were going to handle the situation. But I wouldn't attend this meeting, because I actually had a meeting of my own. Today was my mother's birthday, and unfortunately, I missed half of it to record this video. Please, okay. all the leaders are here, okay. we're waiting. Okay. okay, just just tell him like there's a bad- Fuck, dude, dude, I need to be with my mother, god I'm damn sorry, it. dude! Okay. Uh, <laughs> please. These videos take a lot of effort and attention to me, so do me a favor and make it worth it for the both of us. I would appreciate it if you subscribed and liked this video as it would truly go such a long way. And if you just subscribed, let me know in the comments so I can thank you myself. Alright, back to the video. Put us about our differences for peace. OT goes around the server, all they do, counter raiding, raiding, fighting, cause violence. So we just need to get rid of them as fast as we can. OT needs to be removed off the server. The strategy to raid OT is really simple. All of us come together at the same time. We all mobilize with our units as one and we push back OT forces. We all set up our raid bases next to each other. When all the raid bases are set up for all the world countries, we merge raid onto OT and foundation wipe them and get them the f off the server. So everyone should prepare. Everyone get kits, rockets, whatever you can. Bring as much as you can to this raid. Gather as many people as you can. OT is a threat to everybody on the server. What's stopping the other countries in this room uh, from backstabbing us or possibly merging with OT? Well, I'm glad you said that, Coco. Because while everyone in this room was gathering their people and crafting rockets for this raid, we were getting ready too. All this event, America was playing the defensive and always relying on others to help us. But this time, it was different. My America wanted revenge, and we had a favor to repay. I may not have presidency anymore, and I might not be the best leader, but I had the best damn team I could ask for. This time, we were going on the offensive. And while the entire world was preparing for the biggest raid in Rust history, we were plotting every every move. We had Team UI, hits, color coding, the MLRS, and our best weapon, the element of surprise. No one knew we were coming, and we knew the world's every move. While the entire world was meeting in Rome before this raid, I was informed by Tanza to meet here in the train tunnels by power plants. There was another team we'd be meeting there that was on our side for this. Oh, dude, this is sick. Let's do this, guys. Let's go, let's go. Let's go help all these guys. Okay, wait, every single wait, oh, let me double check. I think every single leader right now is in, in their uh, their Great War VC right now. I'm gonna join it real quickly and just listen in, okay? Uh, Spency and Miles, just take the reins. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you guys. A lot more laggy. I think we're uh, I think we're ready to uh, start this then. God damn. But Coco, you can uh, take the reins, you got this. Hello world. How are you all doing today on this fine day? It's quite simple, everybody. We've gathered you all here in this Discord, in this server, to bring balance and restore purpose in this server. As I look out into the crowd and I look into the eyes of all these metal face masks, I look in your eyes and I see ambition. They're doing speech right now. They're doing speech right now. I see determination. Something wasn't right. You see, I wasn't in my main Discord for this moment, so I had no idea what was going on or what was being said. Tonza mentioned that we'd be meeting Brazil here, but we had no line of communication with them. And throughout this entire event, we hadn't even spoken one word to one another. And even though both our teams didn't speak the same language, we both knew what needed to be done here. Brazil, stop! Brazil, team. Brazil stop! Brazil, stop! Brazil, we are on the, the same team! team. Okay. okay, I'm back. I'm back. Brazil. Brazil. Don't shoot anybody. Do not shoot anybody coming up. Do not shoot. Do not shoot. Do not shoot. Do not shoot.
I can't. Yeah, I can't talk Where's to the leader? You, bro. I can talk what? to you, bro. Are you the Are you the leader, Djenny? I'm not the leader, but but I can tell him. I don't have Brazil's leader contact. Uh, hey, Ice. Who's the Who's the leader of Brazil? Where's Brolo? Where's Brolo? Oh, come on. What's up, Brolo? What's up, Brolo? Oh, how's it going? Nice to see you. Uh, Glad yeah, to see we're on the same side. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Everything was going according to plan. We met with half of Brazil's forces, but we still needed to continue on foot to meet with the rest of their country. Luckily, Tati, who was their vice president, did speak some English, so I was able to communicate with him. And while this was going on, the rest of the world was surrounding OT and building their raid bases. Now, allow me to lay out the entire plan. While the entire world was focused on firing rockets at their base, we'd position ourselves behind and on each side of their raid bases to cut them off. We'd also be wearing the same kits as them so we could blend in and no one would accidentally shoot at us. And we even had a team positioned over at the the MLRS truck to launch missiles at the Raiders. OT did, however, offer them Raiders respect, meaning the fighting wouldn't begin until the first rocket was fired at their base. But this was more than just a sign of respect. Once the first rocket was fired, that was our signal. You guys are our only ally right now. All right, guys, world leaders, is everybody here ready? We're ready. We're ready. Yeah, we're ready, man. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Let's rock with that clock out, boys. Let's go. We gotta get a position for the MLRS guys. Kills. Get bags down when you can guys, get bags down when you can. With the raid in motion, our team didn't hesitate to make our way to the battlefield. This was gonna be the most hectic raid I had personally taken a part in. And with everyone focused on sending rockets at OT's base, my squad positioned ourselves next to one of the raid bases and despite all the lag, we were able to fight them off with Brazil's help. Rockets, 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 Oh, watch rockets, out, oh watch my out. god! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's start pushing up a little bit. Oh my god, I almost just got yeah. rocketed. Yeah. I can't kill this guy, what the hell? Okay. what are you doing? USA is shooting us. Are you with us or against us? USA, USA, revive me. No, I'm, unfortunately, I'm just here to watch, so... Um, I need to watch you die. The raid on OT's base was going pretty much as you'd expect. There was no doubt in my mind that this base was gonna be demolished and torn apart from this raid. But remember, the reason everyone was here wasn't just to remove OT off the server, but to secure the nuke that was still hidden inside their base. This was gonna be a long raid, and an absolute war of attrition with everyone pouring in from all sides. The only thing that could save OT from this raid would be the same thing that helped end the raid on my capital. And that would be Nightfall. Once the sun started to go down, the majority of rockets from all teams had now been exhausted exhausted and their supplies was running low, but everyone didn't give up. They all continued to run into the breach points of OT's base, hoping to do something in order to find the nuke. And well, I was there too, except I wasn't there looking for the nuke. There are just so many guns in the water right now, oh my god. It's so laggy. Go off, Pablo, go off with me, go off. Oh my god, I need ammo. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, I, th I, think, I think they're securing it right now. Well, if you hadn't guessed already, the raid was over. It's hard to say who the real winner of all this was, and like I said at the beginning of this video, it all depends on which side you stand. But now that I brought you to this point in my story, I trust that you can make the decision. You may not agree with me or with the world, but that's up to you. The world wanted to remove OT from the server, but my team and I wanted nothing more than to repay them for helping us. And we did what we set out to do. OT's base was destroyed in the process, but with my team, Brazil, and OT together, they were able to 
emergency off the base during the night. And when morning came, it was quiet. No more rockets were being fired, and the world altogether showed OT respect in chat with a wall of GGs, declaring this raid officially over. But, of course, the one thing everyone was wondering at this moment, what happened to the nuke? Did anyone secure the nuke during the raid? Well, after that raid, I sent Tanza a message on Discord asking if they still had it, and Tanza assured me it was still in the base. It was official. OT had the nuke, and with the world awaiting to see what would happen or who would be removed from the server, an emergency meeting was called by OT themselves at the UN. Take a seat, please, guys. Welcome to the emergency meeting. This meeting was requested oh, by OT. So, OT, would you like to take the floor and let everyone know why you called this meeting? Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So, as you all know, uh, we possess the, the one thing that everybody wants right now, the nuke. Despite what's been said in chat, People talking, saying they got the nuke. The nuke is ours, and the nuke is secure. It's in our base. Let's go around the world, leaders. Let's let's hear your case. What do you guys have to offer oil team? Yes, All right, then I, then I, then I, then I, then I, Rome will start. Rome will start. Boys, listen, boys listen, listen. Seniors. Okay. What's the place that causes all the issues what brings us all the drama what gets us talking to each other causing conflicts and not resolving anything it's this place right here fuck president Brolo. we need to make america great again just great again yeah. you use the nuke the I UN. no more un meetings no more conflicts we will nuke not the US. conflict with each other I, I we will not be violent against each other anymore get it the back UN to needs to go all right, all right, where's Brazil? Where's Brazil? Step up, Brad Brazil. Is here. Step up, goats. And so, OT called Brazil up to the stands. Like I said before, I never met Brazil, nor have I ever spoken to them before the raid on OT. This was going to be the first time for the world, for the most part, was going to hear their story and why they took OT's side. Myself included, I was actually really interested to find out. And since both the president and the vice president didn't speak much English, they actually brought their very own translator to help convey their message. Então, desde o primeiro dia, o Brasil foi menosprezado nessa nação e, e a UN foi a grande é, a benfeitora disso since the first day we tried to speak during the meetings and the UN has neglected like all the, the our rights to speak here we didn't have a single chance to say a word and besides that our That's vice president true. got killed in the first day wow. Wow. tentamos conversar novamente mas eles não quiseram e a, nós tentamos raidar eles e nós falhamos Porém, agora estamos preparados. We try to talk again. We try to contact the UN to resolve all the issues, but it was like they, they didn't want to. Então, eu gostaria de perguntar para vocês, vocês confiam nas Nações Unidas? Essa nação que não protege o nosso povo? So I need to I need to ask you, do you really trust the UN? Eles não apoiaram o Brolo. Eles não apoiam ninguém. Eles só apoiam a si mesmos. The UN did not did not support Bravo when he was in trouble in his, in his own nation. They don't support anyone. They all like all they do is just is just for their own means, their own objective. If you take an action, we're gonna stay out of it, Coco. I guess in 12 hours time, there will be a new president, that will be me. Good luck, Coco. And one by one, each OT member began to respond back at base. They had already made up their mind from what Brazil was saying. The UN was gonna be nuked. This entire event, Brazil had been silenced and misunderstood from the whole world. My team had our problems with the world too, and originally we wanted to nuke Mexico, but with OT heading this way to nuke the UN, we couldn't help to feel like this was the best option for everyone, especially Brazil. I mean, it makes sense. Brazil earned this nuke by helping OT not the US. We weren't the ones on the ground delivering fancy, so if they wanted to use it on the UN, I was more than happy to let it happen. And since at this point there was nothing left for me or the other members of this meeting to do, all we wanted was to just see this thing go off. And with OT around the corner making their way into the UN's base, I and everyone else made sure to get a good view of it.
god! Oh my god! What the oh fuck, fuck is this? Oh, the radiation! Oh my god, the radiation! Oh And well, Brazil had done it. The UN and their corruption was removed off the server. And honestly, beyond this point, the world was a better place. Not just because the UN was nuked, but everyone was at a high at the end of day three. The server settled their differences and forgave OT after today. They may have been the bullies and the superpower of this event, but in some ways, they were the ones delivering peace, unlike the UN. And unfortunately, this is also where my story comes to a close. But you might be wondering, what about Coconut Bee or your beef with Mexico? Well, well, sadly, Coco was never seen on the server again after the raid on OT, reinstating me as the president for America. He did everything he set out to do, and respect to him for trying. There was so much more lore and meaning behind me and Coco's rivalry, so much I unfortunately either couldn't fit into this video or lost due to video corruption. I tried my best to cover almost every aspect of both our stories. Although our story between each other was unfinished, it was finally over with the both of us coming out on top. And as for Mexico, we actually managed to settle our beef later that night. Night. I was finally able to speak with their leaders and work out our differences, and since they gave us a fair online raid, we offered to give them one as well, except on our own and without OT's help. However, just as you'd expect, the raid would end in a stalemate just like their raid on us the day prior, further proving how our war was all for nothing and maybe in a different time, different place, just maybe things between our two countries could have been different. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video and getting to this point. This was my longest and hardest video I've ever worked on. But first, I just want to say how sorry I am for how this video took way too long to make. I've been working on this project for the last five to seven months almost every day. And I will admit, I've restarted from the beginning on this video three times over until I was happy with it. But I want to start uploading a lot more this year and I'm hoping to get a video out at least once a month. So please do me a favor and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out. And before I go, I just want to ask you guys to join my Discord as I usually need tons of help on these videos when it comes to making cinematics. And while I'm at it, I want to thank everyone who helped take a part in making this video possible. Without you, I wouldn't have been able to finish this video. Anyways guys, thank you for watching, and thank you Fancy Orb for hosting this event, and helping make this video possible for me. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time. A final thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Use my link below whether you're on PC or console, sign up for free and get these awesome rewards today.